And okay guys, now we got another tutorial coming out at you, and this one is for the tower defense game. Now, I haven't done one of these for a while because I didn't really have the need or you know, I just didn't get a lot of views or whatnot. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to get our turrets to shoot and how we can work our scripts in such a way where the physics engine isn't doing as much work for the detection. Now in the past I've done a lot of uh, on collision enter, exit, stay, and vice versa. And that developed its own problems because the physics engine would be too heavy. And I couldn't get as many turrets on the screen as I really wanted to. But, in this system, I went away from that. And, well, it actually turned out really, really well. And I'll probably use this form of technique in uh, other cases where we don't have enemies and stuff. Because it seems to work really, really well. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you're probably using particles or something. These are actual physical bullets. Okay, they're pulled. Yes, they are pulled. And they are doing the on, on trigger enter. So we all get every single time one of these bullets hits something, it does on trigger enter, compares a tag, and vice versa. But the actual turn itself, the only thing that it's worrying about when it goes to this shooting right here is just shooting at the target that's it that's the only update that it's running is a single update for this now you're probably thinking well then what are you doing for uh the detection and stuff i am actually using what they call a an overlap spear okay basically what it does is it gives me an array of things to shoot at okay <coughs> so our, our little placement code right here is going to be reworked I just got a prototype right now but you could still like place turrets on top of turrets if you really wanted to well can you yeah there we go that's pretty close that's pretty close and there there you go again so my detection thing isn't working the way that I want on that one, which is fine. I mean, what do you expect, right? So the overlap sphere gives an array of colliders, okay? And in there, you can also give a layer mask. So what I've done is I've layered mask where the spear cast will only hit stuff on the enemy layer so all these turrets and stuff like that it doesn't do anything literally does not do anything so we get so each time one of these turrets cast it only detects if there's an enemy here once it has the enemy then it starts doing its update loop hey we've got a target and that's how it works. Now you're probably thinking, well, it's a spear cast, so you've got an update. Every single frame, you're doing a spear cast. No, no, we're not doing that. We are doing it in a different type of loop. And this is a more of a calculated loop, okay? See, I haven't dropped any frame rates whatsoever, okay? It's, it's slammed on 60 pretty much the whole time. And look how many turrets I've got. This, these are all physical bullets, their models, everything. All the on collision enters going on the bullets, and that's that's pretty much it, right? So it's 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 got weight to it, right? It's got some some um, you know, it's got some actual physical calculations and things, but the more turrets that I place on the screen you don't really see much of a frame rate drop and you're also got to think 
I'm also recording, so I don't have the full CPU usage on this computer as well. But you can see, for instance, that everything on my thing is still going really, really well. Okay. So we're we're getting 60 frames really big time. Okay. And as I start adding more and more and more and more, I put pretty much unlimited range for these guys. So you guys can do some like range calculations or whatever we'll probably do it in in the tutorial series but I just wanted to display that this is very efficient enough I mean look at all these turns look at that that's crazy huh and they're all shooting and oh we see 52 50 so we finally hit some 50 some frames in the 48 so we're finally doing that but look how many turns you got on the screen. Okay. So we're going to go in here and see how many bullets we actually have in the game too. Bullets. We have. In our pool. We have 78 bullets in here. Now it's 81. Okay. Because a little frame drop and stuff like that. Now you can cap that out. At, to use x amount of bullets but these are just actually that's probably what's going on and you see this index the update index it reaches all the way up to 130 some I don't know if you can actually see it in the video but there's a hundred and thirty freaking turns on screen all doing its thing okay and you also gotta think we're getting more performance hit as well because we're working in the editor the standalone build could probably do even more but the thing about it is if we did the standalone build and things well i'd much rather run it in the editor with a little bit more performance being lost because i look at it this way if it runs good in the editor like this then when we do a standalone build I know it's going to work better because I don't have all that background stuff that speed that you that uh, Unity strips out once you do a build because it does code stripping like some of that stuff that you're not using gets stripped out if it's not referenced it gets stripped so we've got that as well and when I go over top of this it does not. Um, it does nothing now pretty soon we're going to work on an upgrade system and stuff like that but i wanted to show off that you could do this many turns on screen without a whole bunch of loss okay <coughs> and it it works relatively well now how i did that well you're gonna probably not like it maybe or maybe you will now I put that I, I think we're gonna to have to cap out these bullets and not let them exceed the maximum because well <coughs> a this is every turn in the game you're gonna have range tests and stuff so on and so forth so you're not really going to like have a serious notion of having unlimited range for turns okay you're gonna have you know a range and then you're gonna have a uh, um, saving system and all that stuff but we're going to integrate some of this into the saving system as well because we've got extra stuff here. And this is still doing managing and all that. We still got money. Uh, current TD is not done. But anyway, let's take a look at some freaking code so we can show you guys how to build this. So <coughs> for the most part, these are just texts 
okay, for panels and stuff like that. Nothing big. And we've got buttons and stuff. I put this, uh, this little hint in here. Wait, I can't see it now. Why is that? Okay, something to do with how it updates in the editor and stuff. Sometimes your like text goes invisible. It's kind of dumb. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of dumb. So anyway, and I still get this get this active. I don't know what the heck's up with that. And did Unity just lock up on me? Seriously? Okay. Yeah, it did. Nope. Okay. It must be something to do with that bug. Oh, well. I'm going to reinstall Unity after this anyway. So, in any case, here's what's going to happen. We've got our tower defense here. And we're going to go into some code. Not the FPS counter. I don't care about that because everyone can... Oh. Whoopsie! There we go. So this is panel helper. That's not useful for us right now. Okay. In this managing script, we have to use UI events and event systems and system.collections.generic because we're working with lists. Okay. Now. In this one right here, we've got a camera, and then we got a layer. This layer is the layer that we're going to be hitting for the game object. We want to hit all the layers, but this layer, when we hit that layer for like the ground or turrets or stuff like that, we want to be able to go, hey, we've done this. So in start, if our camera's null, then we grab the camera. Okay, camera.main, because this game should only have one. I don't see anything else being used. <clears throat> if tower to build equals null, then we grab the tower. The qua the in our other videos we showed you that we have a parent class. We've got current money game object to build and we've got these functions can build if it's blah blah, blah and there you go i mean it's pretty standard stuff this is a bool the amount we pass the game object in the layer hey if money if our amount is less than our money then in go dot layer equals layer which is the layer that we're passing in then we return true in any case we're do false pretty simple stuff and this is a simple class for uh you know tower name cost tower we have to have a tower name because the ui we actually have to have a tower name also for our saving system Okay, how much saving wise? Okay, now this is part of the savable class. The savable, we have a name. Okay, now on enable, when the tower gets enabled at first, we do this static function here of tower tb managing dot add tower and we add this our savable okay on the disable we don't really do anything to it on the destroy when this object gets destroyed this function gets called we remove ourselves from tower remove we remove this and the reason why we do that is simple when we want to save something we already got the variables there. All we have to do is serialize the information, <coughs> which is pretty simple. This got the name. <coughs> and when we do a class thing, 
we can also put I think base tower has a vector 3 in it no we've got oh yeah this is another thing that I've got to change up for you guys because this actually works a lot better but let's go back to managing okay so we've got the static list of TD base save rules okay towers in game and there we go so this is static but it is privately owned by this class right here so no other class can mess with this okay and then we have we run this managing class in a fixed update okay instead of an update we did a fixed update because when we interact with the world and everything else we don't need it to be like really really super fast i mean fixed update you know works with the physics engine and stuff like that you get so many ticks but i hear the update is actually faster but i use fixed update because every single frame i am doing a ray cast so Fixed update sounds like something that I want to use because of that. You know, there's debates between that and all that stuff. But for the most part, I want it and fixed. Now, I put a, a raycast hit right here because I may want to manipulate this later on. This is false. This isn't being used. Okay. And we have a function here that goes R cast update. Okay. And it's important that you put this before you do this. Okay. When we're over the UI system, this right here becomes true. Okay. When we're over the UI. But see, the problem is. This is the function that makes our towers, you know, look for enemies in the scene, okay? And it also scales with our, how many towers we have in the game, okay? So, if I put this below this, this isn't going to happen and it's going to look really dumb. But I also don't want this raycast to happen or anything else if we're over the UI because it's pointless raycast. Okay, I want it to return when we're over the UI. So that way, when we're over the UI, we can't place turrets or nothing like that. You know, you're sitting there clicking a button. You shouldn't place a turn on the ground and then like use precious money. That's that that would kind of suck, right? But we. We have it this way for that reason right there. So how about this R cast update? Let's let's go take a look at it. R cast update is a simple thing. We have an integer here, update index, and we have our we make sure the list is not like zeroed out. I probably should do a null check and everything else, but I haven't had the issue with it not being instantiated yet. So why bother, right? Now our tower in game, and then we pass this index, and then we call a function get enemy. Then we take our index, our index is equal, plus one, and then this little division thing, tower in game dot count. So we never go over, we never get that crap out of index stuff, you know, and it never happens like that. So that will prevent it from going out of range. We also use this in our FPS for swapping weapons, so we don't have to do lists or nothing.
but we want this class and call this directly so we don't have to do get component or nothing like that and remember this happens in the physical up the physics update so it, it works quite well that way I tried update and it was like eh, I wasn't too happy with it. it seemed like it was a little heavier so I put it in the fixed update and it was a lot better so we've got array casting stuff and this is going to be reworked some so it doesn't matter now we have these static functions and this is very very important that you guys do this exactly like this okay or you're not going to get it to work see how this is a public static right here okay public static add tower this is a saveable and then we do add tower well in game dot add tower if this list is not static and it's just regular this static function right here will not work it's because when you call a function like this it requires you to have this static it's looking for a static list now you're probably thinking well why should I use this and everything else well I just do find objects of type and all this stuff you're gonna do find objects of type every single time your um, tower is instantiated or destroyed that's gonna be relatively slow and then you're gonna miss like references and then you're gonna have null references and then you have to have code to get rid of those null references totally totally not what you want oh, I mean you know there's ways of working it but I didn't find them to be too efficient now all this function does is give us a pointer add tower and remove tower okay and this works with the list so if we need something else to be done when we add a tower in the game then you know we could do it here right but this this works for now for for my purposes I don't know about how you're gonna code yours but let's look at the tower savables class and see how this works see when we do that and we do add tower it's just like a function like we do regularly in unity okay now this get tower this is a virtual function and the reason why I did a virtual function like this is when we go into our tower classes and stuff we can do get enemy okay we can override it because we're a child of it and put our own logic in here if we wanted to do a key he noise every single time this updates we can do it or some type of footsteps or a single ray or anything of that crap okay now I do this if object does not equal null we return so if we've got a target this does no physics stuff and we just return now you're probably thinking why don't you just have this uns uh, remove itself from the list well here's the thing about list it creates a new list every single time you add and remove from it. when we spawn it into the world do we really want the tower to make a new list just because there's one change like if, if it grabs a target do we want it to remove and the answer is probably no because I don't really care about anything I just want them to either exist or not exist and I hope that makes sense to you because if I had not remove it then somewhere in this code when we don't have one in the update loop I would have to go add 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 and then do a pool check hey am I in this blah and that just seems more of a headache than anything and then oh guess what 
Then we have a serialization where we're going to save what tower is where and stuff in the game. So now, oh crap, now I have to get a list of every single tower that's in the game. So by leaving it in there and just removing it when the tower is destroyed, I inadvertently, unintentionally made it very compatible with the saving system. And you see, see where I'm going with this? I hope you do. Because it's it seems like more of a benefit just to, to list it in the game like that. <coughs> now, the other benefit of this is since we have a list, we actually have an index. So... Every single tick, we only do this one time. So if you're getting 60 some frames, guess what? Every single physics update loop, it only updates one tower at a time. So when we have very little of like two, three in the list, it goes super fast. It'll it'll you know go super super fast, but soon as it starts reaching like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds the tick goes slower okay and this is kind of the effect that i wanted because here's the thing this is a lot of physics so we're going to have to find some way of bringing it down because every single frame would be a really a lot of physics and it would probably suffer a lot of our frames per second so by having it tick, tick, tick each individual one slowly and then having it scale because of, you know, being in the list, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. And then once it reaches the end, it goes back to one. We seriously made sure that it could scale in such a way that it's just more friendly on processors. Because, I mean, seriously, 100, 100 towers doing um, not only the iteration for that would be, it would be, the iteration would be quick, but 100 spear cast every single frame, not good, probably. And if you're doing this on mobile, this is super friendly compared to to using the on collision enter exit and everything else and the best thing about this is we can use a layer mask so it will not hit anything unless we want it to so we filter out bullets we we filter out a lot of stuff without doing complicated like funny stuff right and tweaking with the physics engine and putting stuff on layers I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of headache. This, this is relatively simple. I mean, it's just an inspector thing, right? Mostly. Just an inspector thing. So, yeah. Very good. And I have this at 300. This spear, this spear cast happens a lot. Okay? It, it's, it's, it's really, really far. It should be relatively like 30. But I wanted to push it. Push the engine <coughs> to go, hey, let's do 300. So no matter what, we always get one. And all the turrets will be doing its mad crazy stuff, right? I wanted to be as heavy as possible for testing purposes to see if my my small ticks would be effective and it was it was it was relatively good <coughs> now for the hit colliders i just have to grab the first one in the array i didn't care what it was because here's the thing if you got if you had them bunched in like the actual uh a lot a lot of uh enemies well i don't i don't care about anything because even though it's a spear cast 
the first thing that I actually hit will probably be the closest, right? That's that's the way I figure it. So I just grab the first one. I check the link and grab the first one because it's probably going to be the closest one. So then I don't have to do distance checks. Distance checks are kind of expensive. Because it does all that math behind it and then it does the root. And that is expensive. So I try to I try to do kind of the less like perfect way to get more of a, a perfect solution, if that kind of makes sense. I don't know if that actually would. But makes sense to me and I it probably makes sense to somebody right and you know grabbing the first one make it just makes perfect sense to me so like I said in this we should probably have not this hard-coded value here anymore we should probably put range current range equals 30f public floating okay equals 30f okay and we're just going to put this in here so now we can do our publicly ex inspector wise in overlap sphere, we just take our position, tell it how big of a radius, and a thing, and that's it. That's that's all it takes. I mean, it's it's not hard, but it returns every single collider. Okay, so you know all the colliders. That's why we need the uh, layer mask, so we can mask out everything but the enemies. Everything but the enemies, and that's great. Because I seriously do not want to mess with all those enemies. And this is an update. Oh, and here's the other thing. Able to fire. We've got a... I found a bug in the code. Which, you know, happens, right? And all we have to do... This is debugging code. So you don't need this okay we don't need this either so we're gonna go up here I don't think we're actually actually we're not even using this either we're not using this either so for our angle we're calculating the angle based on the forward direction of our target and the forward direction of ourselves, okay? If the angle is less than aim skill, we return true, we can fire. If not, then it returns false and we just don't care, right? And in our towers, I used to have a check between the enemy and uh, us which was kind of stupid and i was thinking about it. i was like wait a minute why do we care about this see in this thing able to fire we should do our head and our helper because here's the thing our helper uses a function that's built into unity because look at target it, it just snaps okay it it's always going to look at that target like perfectly it doesn't lurp it doesn't do any smoothing or anything else. It just snaps and looks at you like, hey, what's up, right? And I was like, wait a minute. Why don't we just use the local position of our head and the local position of our helper? Because if I do that, then I don't have to do any world space, local space, or any of that other crap, right? And that should work just fine. Well, guess what? It did. I just was like, you know what, this sounds like a thing. Typey, typey. 
And then it just worked. I was like, ooh, yes, sweet. Angle, yeah. You know, I don't have to mess with no quaternions or anything like that. And then we do the fire stuff or physical bullets. Okay, and in this right here for our target values, this is the lerping function. Which we've already went through. And I do a quaternion dot slurp. I did lerp for vector threes and everything like that. But I found that it was a little bit more expensive because of um, <coughs> by using quaternions just straight, the engine doesn't interpolate it into a vector three. It it just uses its baseline thing. So and and it's called an equality. Okay, it doesn't take. Or when it does this right here, it works with a quaternion. All right. And if I went Euler angles and Euler angles here and stuff, it has to do another function because it's got to convert it over to a vector three. Okay. And what I found was I got rid of that function call by using quaternions just straight up. Okay, and that was really, really good because it gave me a lot less function calls. I, I deep profiled it and I got rid of the equality call to convert it over. And I was like, boom, done, ship it, it's game. Yeah, no, not really, but it, it just, it just, it, it just done a lot less work. So anytime you do something where it does lost work, then you know we're, you're going to get some more performance out of it. And I try to make as performant light as possible because I plan on putting in as many freaking turrets as I possibly can in the screen. Yeah, and I want to use physical bullets, which means I need to update and rigid bodies and stuff. So yeah, we got to work on that. We got to work on that. So yeah, that is the uh, yeah, that's the majority of it right there. I mean, you know, I instantiate what? Oh yeah, we instantiate the tower. Yeah, and this is our physical bullets. Okay, rigid body speed. I do an invoke. Invoke is just disabling the bullets. So. The bullets don't stay in the world undisabled and just keep translating, which is kind of sucky. So after 4 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever you put in the inspector, it just disables the bullet. And seems pretty good. I mean, I don't see garbage collection problems or nothing like that. It's in a update loop when we're just translating. And in on trigger, enter. If it's enemy tag and stuff, then we do the send message stuff, and we do fix my bullet, which disables it. So, you know, it's just one of them things, right? And we require rigid body because we're moving and stuff, and, you know, on trigger enter, just check it for colliders and strings and stuff. So, <coughs> that's, that's pretty basic. And we've done that. See, this is that thing that I'm, I was talking about. We got two helpers. Okay. And we do the helper. We just force it to look at the target. All right. And then we do a quaternion, full range, helper, this. Okay. And then we give back the quaternion because we're looking for a value that's exactly the reason why we want this okay so when we go back into our tower guess what we actually have target values which is a quaternion and we just made this function to go hey here's my helper here's my target give me the quaternion that i need to lurk to okay and then guess what we 
alert to the target here. At a speed and time dot delta time. Yeah, double, double good. And here is our camera. This camera script is not like super professionally written or anything. It's slapped together real quick. Okay, and you'll have to do some game object magic, but it works. So we got our camera transform, some float values for our horizontal and vertical, which I don't think we actually use, but eh, we could. So horizontal, vertical, speed, and the vector three moving. Okay, so in our update, we got mover.x is that and that okay we're not actually even using these so screw it i ain't even gonna use it ah goodbye junk all right now in the start method we use a parent to child thing our camera is actually a child of a parent game object and the reason why is i don't want to mess with you know making it so we can uh you know look at or we don't want to change the angle. We just want to go left, right, and forward and backwards, right? And that's that's all this is going to do. We don't mess with the Y position or nothing like that. You know? And we translate toward it. And that's it. Pretty simple script. I mean, I don't think I have to, you know, tell you how to use this. I mean, it's pretty basic I mean even somebody who's got 30 days in uh, working with unity could probably write that so yeah I think that will do just fine so yeah I hope you liked the tutorial I mean I know it's not exactly the most exciting thing probably but tower defense eh, you know after you get some models in there and maybe we'll do some funny stuff with some ai and stuff more or less tower defense games are more about like setting up everything than and getting your towers to kill certain things than anything else and i i feel that that's kind of the thing you know i mean Maybe we'll have like some towers that will, uh, some tanks that come in and try to kill us and stuff. But for the most part, I think it, it's pretty okay. I mean, you could put you like a bunch of lines of code in here. Do do. And it's very efficient. See, 60, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the, the video. If you did, like that button, subscribe to, in this channel called Wargaming or something? Or is that Facebook? I think that's Facebook. I, I got a Facebook page at Wargaming. I also got a Steam group too, if you look in the description stuff of the channel. But, uh, yeah, that still seems a little too fast at 60. But, uh, yeah, um... You know, like, hit, subscribe, do the YouTube stuff. This is going to be your friendly neighborhood, Wardon. Over and out.